Hi, my name's Bob Swan, and today I'm going to fish an open match at Partridge Lake. Bob's given me the task of running you through everything you need to know, so hopefully if you watch this video, you'll know what to do if you come to fish an open match at Partridge Lakes. Enjoy. Okay, so we've done the draw. Nelly's pulled me peg 121, which is a brilliant peg on that lake, so obviously fancy it for a nice day's fishing. When you get your peg, you obviously follow it, follow the path through, follow where you drive your car through, and you've got some options where you can park. You can either park in the main car park, which is here, nice and big. Yours gonna have space to park, which is the nice thing about Partridge. Or you can drive and park by the lakes. The good thing about my peg, you can actually park right behind it, so that's a nice bonus. But I'm gonna go and get some get some breakfast, get some maggots, and then we'll get set up. So I'll follow, you can follow me through, and I'll explain as I go. anything you ask it's perfect because i'd never want to eat before the peg i just want to get to my peg and get set up so let's get to the peg get some tackle out and see how it goes lay your nets out to dry three nets three keep nets that's the great thing about park like you're never going to go over your net limit if you've only got two nets in, then it's 60 pound, but the best thing to do is whack three in, then you're never gonna go over. You've got to look after these fisheries, so, especially on sunny days like today, get your nets out to dry, then they'll be nice and safe to put in the water at 10 minutes before the all in. Simple as that. Get them all in. Lay them out like that. This sun will dry them out perfectly. You don't want to spread diseases between fisheries, so. I have a, I usually dry all mine before when I'm at home anyways, but fishery rules, get them dried out. simple when it comes to partridge. When I'm fishing shallow I want to fish with maggots because I think you catch everything and from every peg you'll get the best from it. All I do is buy six pints of maggots, mainly white ones, just whack them in a big tub. I've got some other ones, my other bags elsewhere, that's about three pints there. So then I've got them, few few reds and they're mainly whites, I think they're best for shallow fishing. And then for my mud fishing and edge fishing I like to have some micro pellets and I have some ground bait. So for my micro pellets I use F1 Sweet because there's no fishery pellets here which is perfect. So I use them, nice and simple. I think they smell lovely. I want to eat them, so I assume the fish will. So I've obviously got the six pints of maggots. Then I want some pellets to make up my bait limit because you get your ground bait on top of that. So you've got an eight pint bait limit. So bite these open. This is the pint container. Fill that up. Once. And then fill it up again. Bite. There's your two pints. Then all you want to do, soak them in water. Just cover them in water like that. And then I'll leave them for a couple of minutes. You want, I, I personally like them to soak up all the water so they get nice and soft. So when you mix them in your ground bait, they go nice and heavy and sink to the bottom. So give them two minutes. Of them pellets, ground bait. I think it's essential for when you're fishing on the mud line. I've, I've done quite a bit of mud line fishing this year at Partridge and I've had quite a lot of success using these two ground baits, green halibut and green swim stim. So dead simple, I like to make it dead heavy, loads of water in it, two kilos, because sometimes you need it if there's carp in your peg, you need to feed a bit of ground bait. So open the rags, get one in. Next bag, get that one in. Oh, oh. The beauty of marine halibut is it's dead heavy, so it'll sink to the bottom, which is what you want when you're fishing in shallow water. You don't want the fish coming off the bottom. Mix all your dry ingredients together. So it's like that. And then get some lake water. Oh, before these go, 
what you want to do, dead simple with these pellets, tip them all out into your bait strainer. Some guru. Nice little idea there. And then chuck them back in there. So that's your pellets done anyways. Get some water for your ground bait. Now, I like to over wet it, so just chuck all the water in. Give it a mix round, so it's almost ruined basically. I think the more water you get in at the start, the better. Give it a mix. Give it a mix round. So it's all sloppy and ruined basically. You can get even more water in there. You can't the first time you can't even ruin it, it always comes round. That's the beauty of this ground bait. It's dead easy to mix. So you're coming here for the first time, marine alumet, green swimster, mix it up nice and heavy. Can't go wrong. So look at that now. It's all stodgy and like just ruined bait, like a paste, but leave that, that'll come back around. You've got your pellets there ready. Simple as that. Hopefully that's just nice and easy to understand. I'll get some get some kit set up and then I'll run you through what I'm gonna do. set up and I'm going to talk you through my approach. Whenever I come to Partridge, I set up a mud line, an edge rig and a load of shallow rigs. So I've got myself covered. The reason I fish the mud line is because it's in shallow water and when the, when the water's warm, the fish want to be up there and feeding and competing for the bait. In terms of my mud rig, let's see if I can find it for you. There we go. So it's got an RW muddy, nice and short float so it's nice and stable in the water and just fish a nice short three inch up length because it's, it's about 16, 17 inches deep so I don't want a two inch up length really. Nice and positive, put your bulk right next to your hook length. You're fishing for carp and F1s, and today, sorry, with it being bright sunshine, I've decided to fish a nice long lash because I think it keeps your poles away from the float. And when it's still and flat, that's always going to get you a few extra bites, especially when they're spooky. Um, so that's my mud line. Edge rig is very similar, same rig exactly, just it's slightly deeper down the edge. It's not the nicest edges on here because you've got some rushes, but I've still cut it out because you can garden here. The key, that's one rule that I want to touch on is gardening. You're allowed to cut the grasses as long as you don't break the surface of the water with your hands so you can chop away with scissors or go across like I did today. I went round to the upper banking and pulled out any bushes that were blocking my way so I don't get my rig tangled. But until the all-in gets sound, you can't go in the water with your hand. But once the all-in, once the match starts, you can go in with the water and do what you want. So I might, what like say, once the all-in all goes, I'll go down to my edge line, put my hand in, clear the bottom out. So that's my edge rig. In terms of shallow fishing, it's a great tactic here all through the summer months. Personally, I like to set up about, well, I think I've got like seven, eight rigs, but you don't have to set that many up. I like to set up a few fixed rigs and a few overshotted rigs. They're all very similar, just set up loads of different depths. I've got like depths right up from 10 inches all the way up to three foot, just so I can cover myself and move up as the day goes on. I just use them little F1 shallow floats from IW really. White Hydro for a short kit, pretty much covers for all the stamper fish here. You're fishing for sort of F1s, which range from a pound up to three pound, even bigger sometimes, and then the carp are probably ranging. On this lake particular, Kobe five and six, there's a lot of carp, sort of two, three pound. In the other lakes, one to four, they do go a bit bigger, but in terms of one here, I think white hydro is strong enough for shallow fishing. When I'm fishing in the mud and in the edge, I'll up it to grey hydro, because I think you, you, can't, you can't go wrong. You want to pull a little bit harder, get them in a bit faster, and hopefully put together that match winning bag. So that's my rigs. In terms of the, the size of gear that I like to use, I think 013 hook lengths is more than ample to put up with any size of fish you're catching here. As long as you match your gear correctly and fish white eyes or something nice and soft, I've never really been broken on 013 end gauge um, hook length. So yeah, that's the that's the setup. Bait, like I said earlier, I've got my maggots, I've got my 50-50 mix. I always mix a mixture of micros and ground bait together, just like that. And then I've, so I've got micros in one tub, I've got ground bait and micros in another and then I've got just ground bait. So if I feel like there's maybe more F1s in my peg, I'll maybe just fish ground bait. And then if there's a mixture of, or maybe there's more carp in my peg today, I might be inclined to feed more micro pellets in the mix. Like, and if, if they're coming off the bottom, I'm getting problems with foul lookers, I'll try just feed it with micros. So you gotta have that mixture so you can make the decision on the day. I've got my box full of pole pots here. That's another really important part of mud fishing and edge fishing. You need to have your different size pots. So for example, there's a medium, a medium guru pot, and I just cut the holes out a bit bigger. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but 
that just makes your ground make come out nice and quickly. So I have one of them on my side tray, ready to go on. And then I have a large one, if I can find one, there we go. And I have a large one, cut exactly the same, holes cut out, so then I can alternate. So I'll start on the large one, because I want to draw fish into my peg. And then when they're there, hopefully just cut down to the medium and catch them even quicker. That's the setup. Let's get some fishing done. Right, so just before we get fishing, I think I'll talk you through the payouts and how they work. One of the nicest things about Partridge is they do payouts in small sections, not just overall. So yeah, they'll pay the overall winner, maybe the top three, but if you draw a not so good peg, today I've drawn a good peg, but if you had drawn poor, then you can fish for your section, 40 quid section, so it pays for your ticket and your bait, which is a great way of keeping you in the match and keeping your focus, you know, but if you win, you can win up to 120, 130 quid if you're in a big match, which is a really nice way of doing it. Better still, if the angler next to you or angler in your section wins the match, or even if they frame overall, you get a default section. So even if they're battering you and you think, oh, I'm never going to win a section, but you can think, oh, they could they could win the match or they'll frame, so then you can get a default. So there's always something to fish for here at Partridge, which is a really nice way of doing it. Right, so the rule here at Partridge is 15 minutes before the start of the match, you can put your nets in. You've got to have them drying out, out on the bank before you start. So leave them out once you get to your peg, like I said earlier. Me, I put three nets in, then you can split your fish evenly and you'll never go over your limits. So yeah, three nets. If you're only putting two nets in, 60 pound limit. If you go over that, then it just counts as 60. But I wouldn't bother, I'd just put three in, then you're never gonna worry then. So yeah, I'll get them in. A good little tip is, when you put your nets in, just shove them under the platform. So reach around, just chuck them in there like that. So then you know the fish aren't gonna, if you just chuck them out in front, then the fish can always like get you snagged with them and stuff, but if doing it, doing it this way means you're never going to get snagged. So there's one there. One over here. weighed in 180 pounds which has managed to win the match so i'm over the moon with that i've had an awesome day i've basically caught back to back shallow on maggots about three quarters of the way across an awesome day bites all day long it has got worse as the match has gone on i've had a really good spell for the middle sort of two hours where i've caught i've, I've caught probably half of my weight in a, two or three hours probably like the, the start and the end's been dead slow but the middle's been brilliant i've caught a maggot shallow the best depth has been every single depth. I must have rotated my rigs a million times today, but one of the rigs that I caught really well on was a little dibber, like a little 0.2 dibber set about 12 inches deep with like at least a foot of line. I kept rota I kept moving that up and down. So sometimes I'd have my float sort of 10 inch deep and I'd catch on that with a couple of back shots. And then sometimes I'd move up to about 13 inch or something. But when it's bright and flat, that rig works really well on here. That's actually got some, um, 10 gyro hollow which works really nicely i've only got it through one kit so i just wanted to try it but what white eye just perfect to be honest but yeah like i said i've rotated all my rigs i've had quite a lot of fish over shotting early on i've caught a 10 inch rig and a 14 inch rig over shot in it and then i've also caught like a few on a two foot rig but that's probably been the best best fixed rig um in terms of where i've caught 
I've caught really well on a probably about 10 meters out, just about a meter and a half of them bushes, just tapping, tapping and lift and drop, tap, lift and drop, just feed over the top, feed lots of maggots. I've fed probably five pints of maggots or something. So you don't need to feed a lot of bait when you come here. Like some people do feed lots where you can, you keep rafting them in and you can feed sort of, you can feed up to eight pints if you wanted to, but really you can do it on five pints realistically. Um, so yeah, I've caught, 180 pounds, which has obviously won the match, so I'm over the moon with that. I should, I should think there's been about 25 people on or something today, so I'll get a decent pick. I'll probably pick up 100 quid for that, something like that, which is really nice. Probably be the last time I'll be here this summer, so it's a lovely little end to the to the season, so to speak. Um, I have caught a couple in the edge, feeding, like I said earlier, feeding micros and ground bait. Um, which was which was which was good to rest my shallow line. Sometimes late on, shallow got really hard. I think the last hour and a half, I've not even had 20 fish. So considering what I've, what weight I've caught, it has slowed right down. So I had a carp and a, a few F ones in the edge late on, just feeding like 100 100 mil of bait, keep an eye on it, catch a few shallow, and then you can drop on it and catch a couple of F ones dead quick. So that's my day basically. But an awesome day, standard for Partridge Lakes. It's just a brilliant fishery. The sun's been out. It's been amazing. So hopefully. This little tutorial of a day's fishing at Partridge has helped some use if you want to come and have a go. It's dead simple to come, dead safe, especially with the COVID-19. Everything's dead, social distance of the draw and stuff like that. So I def definitely recommend coming down for a go. Hopefully I'll see you in the bank here sometime soon. Thanks for watching.